السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. Uh, this uh, talk is about uh, how to make a directory of open educational resources, including MOOCs or massive open online courses. Uh, this uh, talk has got three parts, a general introduction, followed by uh, finding open educational resources and MOOCs, and finally making the directory or the index. Uh, the concept of open educational resources is not quite uh, new. It has been around for some time. And, and these open educational resources are very useful because not everybody can subscribe to paid uh, materials. So the open educational resources, uh, which are free, are very useful, uh, they are widely available. Maybe not many people know that. And educators need either to keep copies of them or to keep track of these open educational resources. Uh, keeping them through downloading and creating for yourself a digital learning resources repository. But you can also keep track of the open educational resources you find uh, through the production of a directory or an index, and this talk is about this particular uh, issue. So making your own repository and directory is an important thing, and you need to know how to actually do it. So where are the open education resources? This is in fact a summary of the most important sites where you can find open educational resources. So OERs, you can find them either through direct access or by searching for them. Direct access means you know where they are and you just go there. So where are they? Now, you can find them in different ways. The first one is through direct access of, of these resources. If you know the address or somebody tells you or shares with you a link to a site where you can find these uh, educational resources. So this is called direct access. Uh, and the access can be uh, through gateways and online repositories, non-repositories, or uh, special search engines that search uh, o o OER sites or through the general search engines like Google and the like. Now, this is just a sample of uh, OER search engines. Uh, the most uh, widely known is OER Commons, and this one will find textbooks, full university courses, interactive many lessons, simulations, and other course materials. So if we click and have a look at o OER, Commons, uh, now there it is. There it is, OER Commons, it's a search engine. Uh, you can, of course, register and sign in, but you can search directly by entering a term here or selecting a subject, an educational level or a standard, and then search for whatever you are uh looking for so this is the uh this is number one so um so open education resources the first one o oer i mean oer commons and then the next one is uh merlot and this one uh it's it's an online learning and support materials uh, and content creation tools and this one is led by a community of educators, learners, and researchers. And let us have a look at uh, Merlot. Now, Merlot, uh, unlike uh, OER Commons, it's a, a smart search of a, a variety of, of, of material. So this is the second one, which is uh, Merlot. Now, uh, the third one is our yeses, and this is also uh, searches across uh, uh, nearly 100 sources of open material. So this is our yeses, 
uh, you don't need to, uh, to, to, to register or subscribe or anything. You just look through these textbooks, the courses, the course materials, interactive simulations, uh, podcasts, videos, learning objects, etc. So this is uh, Merlo. Oh, yes. Uh, now, there is a MetaFinder called OAR MetaFinder called Mason. It searches across 21 sources of OERs, including textbook uh, collections. So this MetaFinder, the Mason MetaFinder, is an excellent uh, search engine. There it is. And as you can see, it searches across categories of uh sites and and in fact we are going to touch on these sites when we come to uh for example you can find because it's a meta it's a meta uh, finder it looks into even the ones i mentioned earlier the oer commons the oases the merlot the Liber all of them uh, can be searched through this uh mason oer meta finder so you can actually use only this one because it's a meta finder, it searches through, uh, it has got what's called uh, deep web access. And in fact, if you look at its address in the URL, you will realize that it is really a meta finder and you can depend on it almost completely. So Mason is the one, uh, but these three are uh, search uh, engines. Now, again, you, you can find um, OERs in uh, open access university repositories. And this is also, it's a new, not very new uh, concept and approach. Now, many universities have uh, adopted this open access uh, approach uh, by creating repositories and giving access to these repositories. And this include open access courseware, open access learning materials, open access books, and open access MOOCs, which are called the massive open online courses. Also, you can find directly open access materials, not three universities. If we just shed some light on these types of university-based uh, open access materials, uh, we start with the open courseware, uh, and the first example is the John Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health. You can click on that and go to the site where you can find quite a number of uh, courses uh, prepared by these universities and offered to, uh, to the public. So it is John Hopkins School, uh, School of Public Health open courseware. And you can, in fact, uh, register to start with. Uh, and then you can access these uh, courses. For example, managed care and health insurance, you can open that. Uh, well, there is uh, the, the broken link now, but this is uh, a site where you can find open courseware in John Hopkins uh, School of Public Health. The second example is the MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, and it is offering uh, open courseware as well. So you can find uh, some of the courses which are beneficial, beneficial to you, and you can use them straight uh, away. It is MIT open uh, courseware. The third one is the open course library by Washington State Colleges for uh, and this one, in fact, uh, for uh, they are prepared for Washington State, but they are very useful to others. Anybody can actually access them and uh, use the courses. So this is the open course library. And again, there is an open learning initiative by Carnegie Mellon. You can access that and download some of their courses uh, and use them in your in environment. You don't need to enroll uh, to the courses. You just um, 
uh, select the course and you can uh, you can straight away download uh, the course. So this is a Carnegie Mellon University Open Learning uh, Initiative. Next to that is Michigan University. It has got a huge, actually it has got many sites. I will show you another one later on. But this one contains um, uh, courseware, uh, open courseware in Michigan uh, University. You can find this courseware by clicking on find. Then this is, uh, these are the courses you can find open publications and so on. So uh, this is open courseware of Michigan. Then your Yale University also has got open courseware. These are the open courses of Yale. You can access them through this uh, site. You can click there and go to the courses and you can select whatever course you want, chemistry, classics, economics, etc. Uh, of course, we can have some general courses which are beneficial to us. And by the way, they can also link to other courses in other universities. More of them, we have Open Learn, and this is offered by the Open University uh, in UK. The previous ones were all uh, American, but this one is um, a, a United Kingdom uh, initiative. And you can search for courses or you can select them by actually clicking on uh, the type that you require. So there they are. At the German languages, English language, etc. So there are many courses, and it gives you the uh, level of that course, and it gives you the, the number of hours and everything. So this is uh, uh, Open uh, Open University UK, and there is Tufts University Open co Courseware. So you can go there also and look for the courses they offer. Uh, these are the courses. You can browse the courses. And these ones, in fact, uh, you need to, uh, uh, it's an online course. It's open, so you can enroll and attend that course, or you can direct uh, your students to uh, the courses that you think are, for example, for us, we have genetics, genetics, cell biology, molecular biology, physiology, circulation, respiration, biochemistry, etc. They have beautiful courses ready made and they are in the evening and, and so on. They are open uh, professional continuing education uh, courses in Tufts University. There is UCI, Open University, the University College uh, Irvine, and they are also offering their courses for free. So they are open uh, courseware. People can either join or they can uh, uh, download and, and use. So this is a chemistry course from C, uh, say, uh, UCI. Uh, University of Massachusetts uh, in Boston has got also open courseware. So they have the MIT there and they have the University of Massachusetts. Then you can have uh, these courses. Uh, they are open uh, open ones. For example, if we go to biology courses or chemistry courses, they are very useful to us in uh, health professional education. You go to general biology and then you, uh, you can donate or you can just uh, use them free of charge. And by the way, they are licensed under the Creative Commons uh, license. Utah State, they also have open uh, courseware. There they are, open courseware or CW. So there they are. You can have some education courses, some um, psychology courses. So you can select any of these courses and benefit from it. Now, 
some universities, they have what they call ready to adopt. So they prepare them for you to actually uh, adopt them in your uh, course or in your university or so they are say, uh, called sunny uh, uh, ready ready to adopt. So you go there and you uh, select the courses and and download. Now these are the open courseware. Universities also prepare uh, repositories, including everything: videos, audios, books. Uh, uh, course uh, material and so on. It, it, this, uh, I've shown you the Mason OER MetaFinder before. It, con it, it connects to different repositories. Then we have the Galileo Open Learning Materials. And this is from the uh, university system, from the university system of Georgia. And there you can find different types of materials uh, in this Galileo Open Learning Materials. So you can you can browse textbook, grants collections, ancillary material, different things. So this is a, a repository. This is called a repository. You can access this repository and find material there. Uh, this is an example of libraries book, in, in which you find books. Uh, library text is 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 a, a platform, and if you go there, you can find. Uh, open minds, open resources, uh, library textbooks, free the textbooks, and, and they have a movement. So there, there you have adaptive home books, digital books, etc. Collaboration in the So these are the books, learning, nursing fundamentals, and so on. So you have the books there, and you can start the book. And later on, we will know how to use these online books, because they're you can launch the book. It's not a PDF book, but it is open access uh, a book. So students can actually read through this uh, book, the front matter, the scope of practice, uh, the communication, the diversity, etc. So you can, the students can actually use chapters and you can actually link, link straight to a chapter. And as you can see, they are under the Creative Commons license and uh, it only uh, they only require uh, attribution. So there they are, there you can read the scope of practice, the introduction. And by the way, once you go in there, you can have the chance to actually download uh, the chapter. So now this is the chapter. If I go back, there is a link there where you can actually download full pdf or you can import it into your lms and you can print it and so on full book or a chapter and if you adopt these books you can actually help them develop further by submitting an adoption report and you can donate to this library text and this is library text uh, medicine the next one is a very fascinating thing. It's a lab exchange site. You can find textbook, videos, course materials, simulations, and most importantly are the simulations, very interesting, are the laboratory simulations. So you can go there and look through, you have a look at the simulations. For example, this is gel electrophoresis. And by the way, it is from Harvard. So it's a simulation that you can link to and you can in fact download and use in your uh, teaching. And it's three levels, level one, level two, and three. Start the level and so on. So it is there, it's a simulation and you can be, and you can use it in your uh, course. Now, next to that are the books. We already saw library text as part of a big uh, platform or a repository, but there are very special book repositories. For example, there is this open textbook library. You can go there and it's a library.
Now, this open textbook is very famous. Many people put books there. So you can go there and you can read more on the books and they can, you can see the newest book and you can select, uh, you can search in fact for, for books here and so on. And you can uh, go to subject categories and select your education or whatever category, humanities, law, mathematics, and you have there is uh, medicine. Just next to books, there is nursing and there is nutrition. So this, these are the uh, nursing books. Uh, then you can, there, there is a PDF format of the book and it is under Creative Commons, but uh, non-commercial use. The second one is Open Stats. And this one actually shared by everybody. You can actually add books. You can uh, make your book inside the site. So you can uh, upload a book. You can create a book inside the site. And you can actually have a look at the books created by others. So these are the nursing books, Fundamentals and Skills. Uh, these are two books, Nutrition for Nurses, Pharmacology for Nurses. You can open the book and you can have a PDF sample. And go to the book, to the file, and you can download uh, uh, the book. It is from OpenStax, it is designed inside OpenStax, and so on. Okay, this is OpenStax. It is peer-reviewed and actually peer-created uh, books. Lumen, which is Loyola University Medical Education Network, Lumen, a very important network, Lumen. Loyola University Medical Education Network. They have got many resources. One of them is actually uh, the books. But as you can see, you can also have a look at their courseware. Uh, but these are the books, Introduction to Psychology and so on. And then there is BC Campus, a collection of openly licensed textbooks. There it is. Here also this uh, BC Campus, uh, open education, you can create open textbooks, you can create and you can use the ones which were created by uh, others. So there they are. These are the books. No, these are about the books. You can create open textbooks. You can adapt an open textbook. And you can go to the uh, evaluation and you can use the different uh, parts of the, uh, of the website. Okay, these are the books. There are more. There is this press, press books library. It's an index. It means it, it connects to uh, books, 6,453 results. You can search and you can actually browse. You can look through and find the text you are, the book you are looking for. So there is the press. Uh, books directory. There is mainly open textbooks uh, from Sunny University, and that it's called after uh, Milni, which is a, a person. And there they are. These are the book of Milni open textbooks created by Sunny uh, University. Uh, if you don't uh, 
if you have the ISBN of a, a book, you can go to a site called ISBN uh, search. So you can search for a book using it is ISBN, and if it is open and free, you will find it by entering the ISBN you look for uh, for the book. Okay, now, massive open online courses are uh, created by universities, but they are uh, collated and collected in uh, sites that offer uh, MOOCs. Many of them are very famous. May most people know Coursera and edX, but there are many. Uh, but these are actually listed in a number of other uh, sites. So we have MOOC.org. This is created by edX. And there you can um, find the MOOCs online courses. There you can browse 3,000 online courses. And there they are in different specialties. Uh, of course, you can browse, but you can select that's your specialty. Uh, you can go to science, you can go to health and safety. You can say, no, I want uh, physics, I want science. So it will filter them for you. Then you can browse uh, through the ones which you selected, the categories you selected. Now, the second one is Wikiversity. And Wikiversity is, in fact, um, a multi-language site for free course materials. Uh, so you can go to uh, and select, for example, uh, in Arabic, there are some uh, link to there. And then you can see So it links you to Arabic um, materials including uh, MOOCs. Now, this one is fascinating, is amazing. This is a complete list of MOOCs. And it is called MOOC list, MOOC list. Everything is here. Even uh, the sites sell free online courses from Coursera, edX, FutureLearn, Udacity, and other top providers and universities while well, different categories and subject skills, and you can use a multi-criteria uh, page. But for example, if I click there, I will select categories, then I can search for a category, and then I will find the MOOCs related to that category. And this is uh, the most comprehensive uh, MOOC uh, site or MOOC listing site. Uh, there is one called My MOOCs, and, and also my MOOCs is a place where uh, massive open online courses are collected. So you can go there and you can search uh, in this uh, site for uh, massive open online. And you can also, of course, uh, select a category and search within a particular category rather than general search. And then even it says here there are eight, 815 uh, MOOCs and they are categorized into nutrition and wellness, disease and disorder, public health, healthcare and nursing. So these are sample courses, sample MOOCs in uh, my, uh, my MOOC. There is a center called Open MOOC Resource Center This is the Open uh, MOOC Resource Center, and you can actually find uh, English, MOOCs for English language learners and professionals, journalism, media literacy, uh, business, science, uh, tourism, different types of MOOCs, different categories of, of MOOCs through Open uh, MOOC. Now, 
there are other materials. So we had a look at university repositories, books, uh, courseware, etc. We had a look at books. Now there are other open access materials, and these are repositories and directories. When we say repository, it means the material itself is there. A directory will give you links to materials. So we have uh, directories and repositories prepared by entities other than universities, and they provide access to materials produced or collected by these entities. Uh, there are, some of them are just blogs by individuals, and one of the largest directories is the Martindale uh, Center. So the Martindale Center is a huge directory. It, it gives you links to a multitude of uh, sources. And these are just news about uh, on the site. So you can uh, uh, you can register by the way, let me show you. You click on login to Martindale. And then you can actually go to Martin Dale Center and register. Okay, so, uh, and by the way, uh, it, it, it's also possible that you, uh, in fact, go directly to the Health Science Library. It is called Martin Dale Health Sciences. Health Sciences, and you can go there. This is the one, Martin Dale Center. And this one is, in fact, specialized in healthcare. So you can browse there and select by discipline and categorize in two different ways. Uh, virtual medical center, anatomy and histology, anesthesiology, brain, so different centers. If I go to brain and neuro center within the health sciences center, I will have resources related to neuroscience and clinical skills and everything related to neuroscience. So this is the Martin Dale Center, the last of in this category, which is open course materials uh, created by entities other than uh, universities. So these are this is just a, a navigation. This is just um, a, a tour of open uh, educational resources and MOOCs. Uh, but if I browse through all of these. I can, of course, create my own repository, but I can also create a directory or an index so that I can find them easily and I can actually use them to link. So the, the index is useful for finding and for also uh, copying uh, the link. So how do we do it? Now, you need to keep track of the resources you find. So, so you, you do that in a way so that you can go back to them when, they, when you need them. You categorize them according to your own uh, needs. And you can also uh, create this category in a way that makes it easy for you to use them during instructional design. So now if I am designing, instead of searching for things while I am designing a course, I open my repository and I find what I am looking for, and then I can use it during instructional design. They can also, you can also add them to a Word file, or a PDF file, or a PowerPoint file, PowerPoint file, and then this uh, will be clickable the way I did now. And now I made them clickable, so I just click and, and show you what I'm talking about. The best way, the best approach is to collect them in a Word file, and you open a new file and add a title to the file. Then go to the resource. If I have a YouTube video that I like, I go to that page and then copy the title of the material. So if there is a video, you, it will have a file, a, file, a title. You copy the title, paste it in the file, in the Word file. Then you go and copy the URL of that resource 
and add it as a link to the title already pasted in the file. So now you have a, a, a title and, and a link in through that uh, title. Of course, there are different ways of copying um, for, in YouTube. You can copy from the uh, the file under the file itself. You will have the, the 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 title, and the URL will be in the URL field. So you can copy uh, the title, then uh, go and copy the uh, URL, and then link to it. But if you find it in the search uh, 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 result or on the side of the file you are watching. Then you can copy the title, and the title is already uh, linked to the URL. You don't need to do this linking thing. Also, if you search through Google, for example, and all the findings are suitable for you, you can just go ahead and copy the search result, also the name of, or the title of the uh, material is already linked to, uh, to uh, the file itself or to the site itself. So this is the quickest way. You do not copy the title first and then copy the URL and make it as a link. But in the finding, in the search result, or in YouTube uh, uh, search result, or in YouTube page, you can copy the title which is already linked to, uh, to the material or to the resource and paste it into uh, your file. Then you can then save the file as PDF to make them easily uh, uh, clickable. So if I want to demonstrate to you this concept, I will just uh, open a Word file. Uh, and then in that Word file, let me open the Word file first. I open a new, brand new Word file. Of course, my software is W at the end there. And can I can name it anything. Let us see uh, OER directory. So I called it our directory. And then I go, for example, this is a, a, a list of uh, material and, in, and this list is already linked. So I can go straight and copy from there. Because what I copy is already linked. So if I copy this, actually I clicked by the way without meaning to do so. If I paste them here, they are already linked. They are already linked. So this is a list of materials already linked. Let me just remove. Now there they are. If I now uh, uh, hold down the control key, and click there, it will take me straight to this uh, resource. So you can copy from a result which uh, already has got links in it. Okay, if I go to YouTube for you, now I want to go to YouTube. I put there brain YouTube. Uh, I misspelled brain. What happened? Uh, let me do it again. Brain. YouTube. So what I meant is I want uh, YouTube videos. If I copy straight from the, this, this results, if I copy from there, And then I paste it there, it is already linked. So if I hold down the control key and click, it will take me to the YouTube channel and open 
the video straight away. So if you, uh, I have some issues in my, uh, in my browser. Anyhow, let me don't not to waste time on that. So you can, in fact, copy and paste from a search result. Uh, copy and paste from the search result. If I open this and go to YouTube itself, I can copy the brain it is the most complex organ in the human body. I can copy it from here and it is not linked here. So I need to do the linking. But here they are already linked. So if I copy this, the link is already in there. So this is uh, the last thing that I wanted to shed light on and uh, 